hated this. They gave up on the Mitch Trubisky experiment. You brought Andy Dalton over. The QB1 graphic now dies at this pick. But the interesting part is Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace are on trial for their football lives in Chicago. And historically, teams with coaching staffs and regimes that are limping in, that draft rookies, that play early, tend to not see the other side of that. Think Jeff Fisher. Think Hugh Jackson. Think Lovey Smith. Because the franchise and the ownership gets a look and says, hey, we like this quarterback. We don't necessarily think you're the hands that need to be molding this very expensive clay. Right. And then you get shown the door. So if you're the franchise and the fan base, you're thrilled. If you're Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace, you're kind of looking around going, we might have to start looking for other work. Right. You have to immediately cash in or else you are up out of the paint. Like, it's that simple when it comes. But, like, this move tells you everything about that front office and their mentality and that they are going up to get this guy knowing that they are voided at that position. And, look, this is a group that has not had a Pro Bowl quarterback since they won the Super Bowl in 1985, bro. Like, they are desperate for this position. Sarah Sprain is on my timeline in all caps, and I respect it, and I understand it, and I just hate that Justin Fields isn't coming home, but if he's going to Chicago, that's fine. Like, I think it's a fit. I mean, listen, he had to leave Georgia to go to Midwest, the Midwest to have success the first time around. Yeah, so no, it's cool. We can rip that band-aid off cannot repeat. Yeah. yeah, let's keep ripping that band-aid off. Let's do that. I'm so, listen, I'm sorry, Trev, but, like, there is something about this guy. And listen, as a proud Midwest alum myself, I can understand it. Those are good salt of the earth folks right. in no Chicago. Doubt. No doubt. Mike, you were talking about it earlier, like the fact that the regimes don't survive. I would argue this. There's no price I wouldn't have paid in Chicago. The, the analogy I've used is if you've ever been on eBay and you're out there like making a bid on something, you're like, I'm comfortable with this amount of money. And then all of a sudden you realize, well, I'm in the moment. I want to pay even more. Then you realize it's three days before your wife's birthday. And if you don't get this, you're done. That's where they all are. Like if you got to overspend, Mike, to get a quarterback, I say you do it all day, every day. Ashley, I think the pick's about to come in. Uh, we'll let you guys take him. I, I think whatever Chicago has done here was worth it if they get themselves a quarterback. Yeah, young, cheap quarterback makes sense, right? Rookie deal, you ride that out until you can't anymore. I mean, just just acquiring premier talent at that yes. position. Like, we all walked into this and said, Andy Dalton, since he's been in the league, has kind of been like the line of demarcation of quarterback, yep. meaning he's always going to be the sum total of the weapons that you put around him. Well, there is that chime, and the Chicago Bears, who have traded up to this 11th overall pick, have selected. Bum, bum, bum. Mm. Give us the pick. We're not going to do the Philly thing again with this time. I know, where it just stalls and you're like, you're really, uh, uh, wah, wah, kill me here. Wah. Kill me, Smalls. Imagine if you're a Bears fan. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. a thing. Yeah. 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 California. Like, what are Jesus, we doing? Jesus, take the wheel. Okay. Sarah Spain's yeah, got to be little, drinking little hard right we now. We can see on this show. Yes, we can. Sarah Spain has definitely punched a TV by this point. Yeah, right. Everyone is sweating what? in Chicago. What is this? I don't know. Did oh, our Kyle Trask. Trask. Make it Kyle Trask. Come on. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> we are waiting. Kellen Mond. Come on, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> it is I, agent of Ke- like. Yeah, like, how, the, do you think the closer we get to the screen, the, the quicker? By the way, we're find kudos out? to Dave Gettleman for making that trade. Like Dave Gettleman, who never trades on. Like, yes, he that's got a, a great point. That's he got a really haul. Good, good for Dave Gettleman. A freaking and all, haul. I, yeah, like in all seriousness, Dave Gettleman, who who gets brutalized on draft day and sometimes rightfully so, but that's a haul for Dave Gettleman. Like, nice job by the yeah. Giants front office. Well there. Matthew, that's so true. And we do, and like so much of the way we judge yeah. Dave is going to be based on what happens with Daniel Jones. Absolutely. When some of the free agent moves he's make have really panned out, ones that he got roasted for in real time, as have some of the draft picks outside of Andrew Thomas last year. So I'm with you. This is yeah. excellent GMing. Yeah. This yeah. is not excellent <laughs> draft. <laughs> oh. Why is this? Yes, oh. there we go. Oh. Yes. There, is, there we go. There it is. Yes, oh. sir. Oh. There it is. been waiting. It's, I, I'm not even that, that excited for Justin right. Fields. I'm excited <laughs> that they just announced that, the pick. Yeah, he had the pick. Say, but Justin just... Fields, who has the strong arm, he has the size, he has the speed, he will now go try to be the hero in Chicago. They picked Mitchell Trubisky four years ago. We saw how that turned out. They're now taking a risk, putting all of their faith into Justin Fields. And I see this one paying out and paying off. I, I think this will be faith rewarded. There's a great article by Chris Hummer on 24-7. He's back in 2019, and it talked about Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields have been one and two in life since going back to high school. Yeah. Fourth Georgia high school product projects, both one and two in their respective recruiting class in 2018. 
What did Justin Fields do in college that showed you there's any reason to doubt the pedigree of the player that you just got? If you want marquee stat performances, go back to 2019. If you want an all-time grit game like the one we're showing you here, what he did against Clemson was evisceration. It was complete fatality from him in honor of the new Mortal Kombat movie. Trevor, they got to win. <laughs> and that, that's like the biggest thing that I like had the gripe with, with regards to the conversation surrounding he and Zach Wilson, right? It was that Zach Wilson does all of these things wonderfully, and I do not want to take anything away from him. But Justin Fields is almost like a souped-up version of Zach, uh, Zach Wilson, essentially, yes. right? Like he's just a little bit faster, just a little bit stronger of an arm, just a little bit more athletic, essentially. And we were waiting to see who would take a chance, theoretically, on a guy that is about as bona fide as any of them could. I, 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 we talked about the excellent GMing for the Giants. Yeah. I think this is an understandable move. We've talked about in the last couple of days. The Bears should be desperate for a player of this caliber and Fitz uh, uh, going up and making it happen. This is one of those. We hear it all the time with quarterbacks. If you know you have your guy, and especially if he starts falling in this range, there's no price too high to pay. Yeah, and there was nothing to lose. I mean, if the, if the Bears don't address the quarterback position, they're going to be repeating the same cycle on a team that has some talent. If, if they, frankly, if they just sit there and wait till the board comes to them, they're not going to get accomplished to one thing the fan base and the team seems to want to get accomplished most. So if this works out, if Fields is great, it doesn't matter what price they paid for him. If he stinks, it doesn't matter what price they paid for him. Like, right. either way. That's the best point of it, right? Is yeah. that, like, if, if Fields crashes and burns this year or, like, or for some reason they don't play right. him and they play Andy Dalton, Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace are out, right? Yeah. If he does amazing – and the whole they franchise saved, is still intact. They right, saved they, their job. They, 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 they saved their job. Uh, look, and here's the thing. First off, by the way, Justin Fields has not thrown a pass yet in the NFL. He's already the best quarterback Allen Robinson's ever played with. Yeah. He's already <laughs> the best quarterback <laughs> Allen Robinson's ever played with in his career. And, uh, look, fantasy-wise, I think even though he's the fourth quarterback off the board, fantasy-wise, Justin Fields is going to be the guy that I have ranked the highest. First off, the rushing ability. And then you think about the Bears, like – with uh, with Allen Robinson, with Cole Komet, with Darnell Mooney. Like, there's some pieces on that offense, right? Dave Montgomery's a nice pass catcher. They get Tariq Cohen back. They signed Damian Williams in the offseason. Last year, the Bears, ninth in pass percentage, eighth in pass attempts, sixth in deep pass attempts. Like, this is a team that threw, and yet they were 22nd in quarterback fantasy points. They just didn't get the production. They needed out of Mitchell Trubisky and Nick Foles, and now they get a guy in Justin Fields that can absolutely sling it, who's also a threat with his legs. I, listen, I love the pick for the Bears, love the pick for fantasy, love the pick for Allen Robinson, who has not played with a quarterback, who is one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. Like, you know, great. Listen, and totally agree. Like, it doesn't matter what they paid. In, in my mind, they were aggressive, but they got themselves what I think is the second best quarterback in this draft. And realistically, yeah. they addressed such a huge need. And if you start looking forward through all of this process, like they got themselves somebody that's been knocked, like I said earlier, for two games, uh, Northwestern and Indiana last year. Two games where maybe he didn't play as well as some thought he should. But I would also argue that context matters to those two games in the middle of a COVID season on a decimated team of injuries at the time for one of those games. And a, a week where they weren't even allowed to practice leading up. Like, yeah, there were moments that it looked a little rusty last year. But just like we've said so often with some of the other quarterbacks, you have to watch 2019. You got to go watch 2019.